uh, uh, do not enter uh, the room uh, when the uh, talk already started. Only uh, go in and go out uh, to the room uh, only during breaks. So it's uh, it's uh, all uh, about me. So uh, now I would like to introduce uh, Wim, and uh, he will talk about pipe fire. Thank you. Hi, hello. I'm Wim Tuymans. I work for uh, Red Hat in the desktop team, and I'm uh, going to talk about pipe wire. Don't have a lot of time, but I have a lot of pictures. So. Um, to understand what I'm trying to do here. Um, this is currently sort of a multimedia stack that is used on desktop. So <coughs> you have uh, apps, various apps um, going. Um, I have here video for Linux, that's the camera device. The, um, usually apps, browsers and Skype, they go directly to the device. So that means that only one of them can open the device. Also, if you were to run the browser in a sandbox, for example, uh, which is something you would want to do, you would have to expose that device inside the sandbox, um, which opens a lot of uh, security problems. And you can basically do anything with the device. So um, on the other hand, so what's usually done for audio currently is uh, you put a daemon in between there. Also for video, we have a daemon in between there. Uh, Wayland that controls the access to the uh, devices. So we have currently uh, Pulse Audio, uh, which is an official component um, that manages the also devices and also uh, Bluetooth. And uh, it does also a lot of other stuff, but device-wise, this is kind of what it does. Um, and Pulse Audio traditionally doesn't work very well for uh, professional audio, which has a whole bunch of other requirements. So there's currently Jack, um, which is the de facto standard for doing um, uh, like mixing and, and uh, real-time audio processing. Mm -hmm. So again, there, these apps, they can only access the ELSP device uh, one at a time. So there's APIs, Tebus APIs to make room for one and the other to reserve the ELSP device and so on. Um, yeah. So um, <clears throat> there are some things that can be improved. So first of all, uh, um, for browsers, if you want to run things sandboxed, uh, we need to find a way to access the video for Linux device through a layer that is uh, more or less controlled. Um, so uh, also think about security there. Um, there's another couple of other things here that Pulse Audio Jack story. Uh, can we do something better about that? Um, and also, if you're going to try to do something like Jack, Jack can also share audio between applications. Uh, can we do the same thing for video? So in that, th those kind of thinkings uh, led to um, Pipewire um, and the whole bunch of experiments and things that um, that I'm going to talk about. So basically, um, I'm, I worked on GStreamer for a very long time. Uh, so to me, everything is a pipeline of processing graphs and stuff like that. So again, you'll see that here. Um, so basically, what Pipewire aims to do is uh, place a daemon, one daemon, on top of a whole bunch of devices. Um, so video for Linux devices, also devices are targeted, also Bluetooth. Um, and basically wraps them in what is called a node, a uh, processing node, that you can access from applications. You can, you can make a little graph inside the pipeline daemon to stream data from those device nodes to your application. But you can also do, for example, um, media from one application to another. Um, so this is both for consumption video for Linux, for example, to the application, or from, for example, uh, a video, an audio player to um, also devices, or Bluetooth devices. So the, there's a daemon in between that uh, models uh, that where you can create graphs, very similar to Jack um, in that sense. 
So, but for Jack it's very specific. It has like one single media format that it can handle. Um, so PyPy tries to be a bit more um, uh, support a bit more format. <coughs> Um, I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to skip over all this text. Uh, There's basically a bit of all the objects that are managed by the server. Um, but interesting here, how this is done, is uh, a bit of um, uh, what, it's, what it's called here. Um, a Pipewire instance, so basically any application <coughs> that links to uh, a pipe, the Pipewire library becomes a Pipewire instance, so it can basically generate graphs of these nodes that it can link together. You can introspect that application and look at what's inside and what the graph looks like. You can modify it and so on. Um, and one of the key things there is that you can take one node from one instance and you can <coughs> share it inside another instance. So this is, for example, how two applications could share a piece of processing. You would have the processing be inside uh, this one process, <coughs> but it would be there, there like a virtual node available in uh, another process. So all the data that goes in here is actually basically sent to this one, mixed with data from there, and what comes out again goes back over here and back to this process out there. So. Um, yeah. So this allows you to do uh, kind of interesting things that I will show you. Um, so the biggest part in all of this was how can uh, these plugins, what kind of API do we need? And for this I have uh, tried to make a new API which try to combine all of the things that are learned from, um, from Jack and real-time plugins together with GStreamer and so on. Because there's quite a bit of um, requirements that are very hard to satisfy with current APIs. So, uh, so these are they're called SPA plugins, basically kind of like um, little blocks that do the work. But they're hard real-time capable. They do, don't do any allocations. They have um, fixed um, ways for processing the data and so on. You can also do a synchronous, asynchronous overhead uh, processing. Um, and it's very low overhead. So most of the, the pipewire graphs are built on top of these uh, plugins. Uh, yeah. So not going to go too much into detail here. But uh, basically, these processing nodes are what is uh, the core of the thing. They are in a separate library that is not entirely separate yet, but it should be. Um, but they are basically grouped inside what is called the graph, um, linking them together on, on ports and possibly also inserting other things there to split uh, the data up. And basically all these things then are wrapped inside pipe wire objects. So but before, for example, one pipe wire node it actually contains several graph elements for the ports and actual processing. Anyway, um, but what happens then is inside real-time threads, this is a very simple data structure. Um, there is a scheduler running that basically sends data from one part to another. Um, that's called the scheduler. It's the only thing that runs in the real-time threads, very very simple and quick. Um, you can make it more complicated to distribute loads over CPUs and stuff like that, but for now it's working fine. So some of the things that, um, that are built and that we're actually going to uh, be using soon extensively in Fedora. So if you take Fedora 27, uh, there is a Pipewire version two versions ago but it, uh, it does what it does. Um, and you can, for example, do a video for Linux camera sharing. So the, the Pipewire daemon uh, cap, well, exposes all of the video for Linux devices. And you can connect with the client. You basically expose a node inside the daemon, um, which is then linked to the, to the source. 
and you actually get the data flow from that source inside this application. So then you do some stuff with it. Uh, we have a GStreamer plugin that uh, moves this into a GStreamer pipeline. So applications like Cheese uh, work. And you can have multiple apps, of course, getting uh, access to this video for links device. So for capturing and sharing, uh, it's all like this. Um, so for Wayland screen sharing, it's also something that um, is almost finished. Um, certainly for Fedora 28, we hope. Um, there it is, a bit different. I'm not talking about all the setup of this uh, inf infrastructure. Uh, through the portal. I'll talk a little bit about that later. But, um, so basically here for screen sharing what we're going to do is Mutter will expose a stream uh, to Pipewire which is basically what is currently going on on the, on the screen and then you can connect with your application to get the data into your app. So Pipewire is basically just sitting there in between taking the data from Nutter and shipping it over to apps, one or more. So you can have, for example, somebody recording the screen, another one exporting it over the network and so on. It's basically the uh, same API there. Um, yeah, so what I'm trying to work on is also a bit the audio server part. Um, see how far we get with that. Um, so basically it's, uh, it's exactly the same thing, but uh, very sim simplistic here. It's kind of like what DMIX does, uh, but then with the daemon in between, just put the mixer in front of a sink and have multiple streams being mixed before you uh, render it to also. Since you have a pipe wire application here on the sender side, all the conversion and, and, and DAW mixing and all of that, you can do that out of the out of the daemon, which is what most players actually want. They they want to do like VLC. They want to convert themselves or DAW mix. Um, so that simplifies a lot of things. Um, so yeah, there's a bit of complications there, like moving streams between sinks and so on. There's a lot of work to be done. Um, so for the pro audio case, I have a, a, a working prototype of that where I actually uh, simulate a jack server that's running on top of Pipewire. So you can run a jack line and it thinks it's talking to a jack server, but basically all the processing happens um, with nodes <coughs> in Pipewire. Um, so for that, there, is, there are a couple of two nodes here that are made because for Jack for Pro Audio you have to convert everything to floating point and you have to separate all of the channels into sim uh, separate channels and the processing of each node is also strictly you get something in and you get something out there is no buffering there is no um, in the normal case so the processing model is encapsulated in what is called the pro audio part of the pipe wire graph. So you can participate in that uh, if you follow the rules or you can um, um, go outside that. <laughs> right, so um, that's basically what we currently have. There's also some plugins <coughs> to do also. So it's all a mishmash of uh, stuff that kind of um, proves some things. And for the video capture and the sharing, <coughs> we're trying to lock it down and make it actually work, uh, work well in production. Uh, but all these other things, we hope that they will um, stabilize as well. So, uh, yeah. So do I have a... Yeah. Um, 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 yeah, I was going to try to do a demo, but uh, that does not work in 23 minutes. <coughs> uh, yeah, so I think <coughs> dynamic changes based on device replugging is something that uh, would be interesting next, especially also for cameras if you plug them in, that your streams switch properly. 
Um, but yeah, uh, do you have any questions about this? Yes. How, how do you uh, imagine that we eventually replace all the story? Do you want all the story to send to wire or do you want them to make all the story? I don't know yet. I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know. Um, I think I think in a well, for the few application that actually hard code pulse audio API, which are not very many. Most most applications have either use GStreamer, so they have many different backends. VLC has many different backends, browsers too. So, but the app that really needs to go to pulse audio API, um, maybe it makes sense to run pulse audio on top of Pipewire. Make a special backend there. Um, but you have all these features in Pulse Audio that, that you first need to somehow replicate before you can get rid of it. All this, the, the network stuff. And, uh, so that, that will be a very long term plan. But I think if we can run it on top of Firewire for now, that will be already part of the, the problem. It's kind of like. X running on top of Wayland. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Do you support uh, ERN buffers? Uh, so do we, we do we support the RM buffers? DMA DMA buffers? Yes. So all of the uh, data that is transferred is negotiated with file descriptors. So shared memory either DMA buff or, um, or MEMFD. So there are a couple of things. What, what I currently do is I have a couple of buffers that are recycled in a ring buffer. If an app is not reading fast enough, you eventually, um, eventually the data starts being overwritten. So it's like you're reading from an audio device, which has a ring buffer that goes like that. If you don't read fast enough, you get like, what you think is old is now already overwritten with new data. So that's currently what it is. Because you can't really do anything else um, the buffers that are already used by a client, you can't revoke them without crashing the client. So you don't want to copy them. So um, yeah, that's currently what is done. We've experimented with, <coughs> with also just not giving any clients or not producing any buffers anymore. But then you start stalling the other clients as well. It's also not nice. Okay, no more questions. Thank you. Okay, so so you you know that uh, I will show you some signs yeah. about about time, etc. Yeah. Yeah. 